Drawing this cute celebrating tiger is easier than you think and I'm going to show you exactly how you can do it, no matter your skill level. Hello wonderful people, it's Genevieve and my goal here on this channel is to teach you all about illustration and design. So if you're new, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of the weekly videos and so that you can join our wonderful creative community. And with that said, grab your drawing tools and let's get started. Now today I'm trying something a little bit different. You might notice I'm recording the audio as I am filming. So just, you know, just shaking things up. Usually I record the audio later. Now, if you absolutely hate this, let me know in the comments. Be nice, of course, please be kind. But yeah, just, just trying to see how that would go. That being said, we're going to start as usual by creating a new canvas so we have somewhere to draw. For reference, these are the dimensions I will be using. It is just the size of the iPad screen, but make sure you use dimensions that work for your own project requirements. Now, if you're not exactly sure how to pick a canvas size, I have a video in which I teach you everything you need to know in order to make your decision, so I'll link that in the description below. Another question I often get is how to get the reference image at the top. You can simply go in the wrench icon menu here, selecting the canvas option and then activating the reference toggle is going to let you import an image. So if you want to use my illustration here as a reference, I will link in the description below and it is going to come with the color palette. So usually we have color palettes that are fairly simple in these videos, uh, but this one is a bit more complex. So if you want to download it, it is free and it comes again in the description below with the base illustration that you can use as a reference. That being said, we're simply going to start with a rough sketch. So for the sketch, you can really use any color of your choice. I'm going to go with a pretty, pretty light gray because we're going to be drawing on a colored background. So you want to make sure that your gray is light enough so you can see it. So speaking of background, we're going to go ahead and set our background color to a dark, deep red. So if you're using the palette, it's going to be the first color on the top left right here. But otherwise, if you want to just practice picking your own colors, go ahead for, um, you know, a dark kind of desaturated red. So nothing too bright, otherwise your tiger is going to get lost in the background. There's not going to be a whole lot of contrast. So once that is done, just tap done and we're going to create a new layer for the sketch. So just a new layer that you're going to rename to sketch. And here we're going to start with, as usual, a super rough basic sketch. So we're just going to map out the different proportions and the different body parts. So this sketch really doesn't need to look good. And in this video, I'm always going to be suggesting two different kind of brushes. One is going to be a free brush that comes with Procreate. And seriously, guys, this video is not about the brushes at all. It's much more about the general technique and general idea. So the brushes here don't matter. But yeah, one brush is going to be a free brush that comes with Procreate. It's going to allow you to follow along totally fine so no worries there but if you do want to have a bit more professional results and just save time uh, creating your texture you might want to check out my illustration bundle i will link in the description below and there's always as usual a special promo code for the youtube people but i really really want to emphasize that you can totally follow along with free brushes and even brushes in a different software for this video because we're not drawing with anything fancy here we're just going to use pretty basic pencil or charcoal brushes so for this sketch, we are going to use, if you're working in Procreate, in the sketching panel, the HB pencil. That's a really nice, simple brush. But if you do have the illustration bundle, go ahead and pick the sketching brush. If you're working in different software, just pick any brush that you know you're comfortable with because the sketch, again, we're not going to see it in the final result. So we're going to start by just mapping out where the bottom part is going to be. So just a quick horizontal line. Again, it doesn't need to be clean and precise in any way. And then you can map out the proportions of your tiger. Now here you can really experiment and kind of play with the proportions and customize your tiger that way. Mine is a little bit more than 1-1, one, one, meaning the body is almost the same size as the head. So you can just go ahead and draw, you know, two different sections, one for the body and one for the head. Then drawing a circle for your head. Kind of a uh, a trapeze I guess for the body something a little bit like this and this is what I meant that you could tweak your proportions here to customize your tiger you could have a bigger head and a smaller body or a super big large round body you can really go here and create your own character design at this stage and this is the beauty of drawing in basic shapes is you can very easily change them and then follow along the rest of the tutorial and just use the same technique but with different base shapes 
So with those base shapes, then we can go ahead and, you know, make it look like a tiger. So the first thing I obviously like to do is separate the body from the legs. So just kind of deciding how long my legs are going to be. And then drawing very simple ovals for the legs. I also like to map out the arms. And the arms, I like to just start by drawing ovals onto the body, which is going to be essentially uh, like the shoulder part. And then just drawing very simple arms. My arms usually are kind of, uh, I don't have a clear elbow in my character, so you could have that if you want. And mine are usually just curvy, so, you know, kind of a bean shape, I guess, for this arm. And then another kind of bean shape, but a bit more curvy, more of a boomerang sh shape, actually, for for this arm because it's holding the firecrackers. For the hands, I'm just gonna go with a few circles for the fingers. So very simple. And here, this hand is kind of holding uh, the firecracker, so I'm gonna go and say the thumb is folded on top, and then the other fingers are kind of all clustered together. Now we're going to refine the head a little bit because you can see uh, the, f the bottom is a bit flatter and the sides are a bit pointier, so you can just do that by you know, going over your circle, keeping roughly the same proportions, but just playing with the shape a little bit. And then mapping out where the middle is going to be on the head. So just a curved, well, slightly curved vertical line and then a slightly curved horizontal line. And those are going to help you place the facial feature because, you know, the head is symmetrical. So once you have your plus sign, you can draw the eyes. I'm gonna go with really happy closed eyes. So just big little curves, big little curves. That made no sense, huh? And then a big nose that is going to be much more of a rounded rectangle. And then we're going to just use this vertical middle line to connect the nose with the mouth. And the mouth, I like to draw this kind of uh, Pretending it's a closed mouth first, and then opening one side. You could go ahead and fully open it up. That's just not my, my, my vibe. I like to just kind of open one side instead, and then sketching the tongue. You can then go ahead and map out the ears. Here I'm gonna go with a shape like this. Very simple. And you could go ahead and draw like little hair on top of the head. I don't know, I drew, that's what I did last night when I prepared the illustration. I don't like it this much this morning, so I'm gonna just leave it out for today. And then we're going to draw the tail, very important as well. Same thing here with the tail, you can draw really any position or angle or curvature you want in a tail. I'm gonna go with the traditional kind of S curved tail. Making it quite long to be honest. Tigers have really nice long tails and we can draw a lot of stripes on it So it's just a really fun element to use later And maybe also refining the feet so giving them a bit of a pointy and Maybe connecting the front of the body or reshaping the front of the body I should say so it's a bit more of a nicely connected flowy curve as opposed to a bunch of separate parts Maybe doing the same thing with the back but still, you can see keeping the sketch very rough and quick. You might also want to go ahead and quickly map out if you want to have firecrackers or, um, you know, Chinese New Year, you might want to have an envelope or something like that. So if you want to have firecrackers, you can just draw a stick and then a string and then a bunch of rounded rectangle that are going to be the firecrackers themselves. So once you have a super rough quick sketch like this, what I recommend doing, you've probably heard me do that, say that before, is going in the arrow tool here at the top and then clicking flip horizontal. And the parts that might be kind of skewed or not right are going to jump in your face. Here, honestly, it's not too bad. Um, I'm, I'm fine with this. But if there was a section that you didn't like, you could always use the selection tool here at the top setting it to freehand to select a specific part. So for example, let's say, I don't know, I want to change my head, which I think I'm fine with it, but let's say I wanted to change it, you could go ahead, quickly select around the head, making sure that the color fill option is deactivated. I often get people messaging me on Instagram being like, oh, when I draw the selection, the entire selection just fills in with color. Just make sure that color fill is deactivated. Then you can use the arrow tool here at the top and set it either to uniform if you just want to, for example, resize the head or rotate the head using the green handle 
or distort if you want to change kind of the, I don't know, how it's proportioned and positioned. So you can do that with any body part that at this stage doesn't look quite right. And that one, what's more, that's the beauty of drawing with separate basic shapes is you can really quickly just tweak them, uh, which, you know, would be so much harder to do if you had a full on, just like perfect tiger outline to start with. So once you're happy with your sketch, just go ahead and flip it back. And then we're going to move on straight to the color. So if you feel like you have a very gross sketch and it's just too confusing for you, that's totally okay. You could go ahead and create a new layer. So I'm just going to give you an example. Um, a new layer, we name this one to clean sketch and then lower the opacity of your base sketch and then just kind of go over and finding which lines you want to use. So if you're newer to illustration or if you are used to following tutorials on YouTube, which are kind of, um, how can I say that? They don't necessarily start from a rough sketch, they don't show you how to build your character, it's much more of a kind of copy this or copy that. Then you might want to go ahead and do that clean sketch step, which is totally fine. But otherwise, if you feel comfortable, if you would just want to push yourself a little bit more today, we're going to move on straight to the color. Awesome! So with that sketch, one thing we do want to do though is make sure it is positioned where we want it to be in the illustration. So for that, it might be helpful to just zoom out so you can really see the edges of your composition. And then using the arrow tool, sending it to uniform, um, either repositioning or resizing or rotating, doing anything you need to do basically so that your sketch is where you want it to be in your composition. Once that is done, we are going to change the blending mode of the sketch layer to multiply. And you don't have to use multiply here, but I always recommend changing your sketch layer to multiply because it's going to allow you to see it really well on darker colors. So for example, the background here is really dark, but it's also going to help you see it well, basically no matter what the color is underneath. It's always going to kind of make the sketch pop. Even if the color under the sketch is very close to the color of the sketch, it's still going to look different. So basically just using multiply is going to help you see your sketch no matter what you're drawing underneath, which is really great. And since multiply is going to help us see the sketch no matter the color that is underneath, we can actually go ahead and lower the opacity of the sketch until we can just barely see it. So that way it's not gonna be in the way, but we'll multiply, we're still going to see it. So it's really, really helpful. And here we're simply going to start by drawing the silhouette of the tiger. So it's going to be very, very easy. And honestly, creating the rough sketch is the hardest part of the tutorial. So if you've made it this far, you're golden. For now, it's basically going to be just coloring in a coloring book. So go ahead and create a new layer below your sketch and rename this one to color. Now here, we're going to pick the color of the tiger. I want mine to be very nice and bright so that it has some contrast to the background. So I'm gonna go with this color right here, which as you can see is much lighter than the background and is very saturated as well. So it's gonna be a nice bright orange. And in terms of brushes here, you have a few options. If you're working with the free brushes, you could go in the sketching panel picking the 6B pencil, it's just a little bit thicker than the HB pencil, so it's going to help you map an outline just a bit easier. Um, if you want to not have textures in your illustration, you could go ahead and use straight up in the airbrushing panel the hard brush. And just a quick note here, if you are following my watercolor videos as well sometimes, don't forget to bring the opacity of the hard brush back to 100% for this video. Or if you're using the illustration bundle, go ahead and pick the... Uh, outline brush if you want texture or the base round brush if you don't want texture. I like texture especially for this we're going to go with more of a painterly style so I'm gonna go with the outline brush. And here super simple like I was saying all we're going to do is drawing this silhouette. So basically if you have not done your clean sketch that's kind of what we're going to do here because we're going to essentially go over and find which lines we're going to use. And there's really no right or wrong way to do it. The only thing I would suggest is try to draw your lines in the longest sections possible. So instead of, for example, drawing here and then realizing, oh, I don't like the way it curves and then using the eraser to erase just the bottom, just undo everything 
and redo that whole line. That way you're going to get just better flow, everything is going to get, be connected much better in your illustration at the end, it's just going to look more coherent overall. And believe it or not, when you get used to doing that, it's going to save you some time overall. It is actually quicker to undo and redo than to just try to erase a little part and redraw that one section only. So it's really quite, you know, simple here. All you have to do is, like I was saying, do your outlines. So I'm going to stop talking to let you focus on that and then we're going to meet in the next step when we have our full-on silhouette. Awesome. So once you have the tiger silhouette, don't draw the firecrackers for now, we're going to simply fill it in. Now just one thing I want to mention is that if you're using a brush that has some grit or texture to it, when you use the filling tool, you're probably going to have to adjust the threshold because otherwise it's, it might be filling up the entire canvas. So to do that, just hold the pencil on the screen and then move it from left to right until you find the moment right before it fills out your entire screen. So in my case it's going to be this and then you can simply release and if a section like the tail was cut off you could just repeat the step for any section that is missing until you have the entire silhouette like this we want to do the same thing and draw the silhouette of the firecrackers so just going ahead and creating a new layer and renaming this one to firecrackers there we go so for the firecrackers, you want to use a different color, of course. Um, the firecrackers are going to be bright red, so it's basically a very similar red. You know, it's the same hue as your background, just much brighter and saturated. So if you want to, you know, color pick your own colors, just go back to your background, make it brighter. Otherwise, it's this one in the color palette. And same thing, we're essentially going to just map out the silhouette of the firecracker, so the stick that, then the string, and then the firecrackers. And the thing with silhouette is, um, you know, when you draw a sketch, your sketch might look super good, but then the second you draw a silhouette instead, or, or you create a silhouette from your sketch, you're going to see your shapes very differently and it might look not like you thought it was going to look. So if when you see your silhouette you're like, ooh, I'm not sure about that or I'm not sure about the volume here or I just don't like the way the head is or the way these firecrackers are behaving, don't hesitate to go back and you know tweak your silhouette. So it's really super important before you move on to the next step that you're happy with the silhouette. It's one thing like I was saying to be happy with the sketch, but the silhouette is a completely different game. Well not really, I mean when you get used to drawing sketches you're going to get a better feel for what the silhouette's going to be like, but an example at this stage um, I find that maybe my head is a little bit too squished on this side I guess. So I would simply go back on my color layer, picking the color and then extending the head as needed. You might find that your silhouette is perfect in that case, you know, good for you, but really take the time here to make sure that you like it before we add the color variation. So once you're happy with your silhouette, we're simply going to go in and color over it. So we have a few different ways to do that. The first one is I want to add a bit of color variation within the orange itself. So just a slightly lighter yellower orange to make well, to create added texture, but also just to make the piece feel a bit less flat. So one way to do that very quickly is to activate alpha lock on the color layer. So you can do that by swapping the color layer with two fingers towards the right, which is going to create this kind of checkered pattern behind the color. You could also just tap on the layer and activate alpha lock in the menu here. Now what that does is everything we draw on this color layer is going to stay within the silhouette that we already created. So it's just going to be super super quick. We can change the colors in some sections in just a few strokes. So like I was saying, I personally just want to have brighter sections on the tiger. So I'm going to go with a really nice saturated and light yellow, a kind of golden um, sunflower yellow. 
And here we want to use a brush that has a lot of texture so we can quickly just brush over our shape and add texture that way. So in Procreate you have a few options. If you go in the sketching panel you could use the 6B pencil still. So that's a free brush that allows you to draw really nice outlines with grit but also if you have the Apple pencil you can tilt your pencil and then fill in bigger shape. So that's an option. If you're working in a different software, just trying to find a brush that has either charcoal or pencil in the word, uh, in the word, in the name. And if you have the illustration brushes, just go ahead and pick the basic texture brush. Now here, like I was saying, if you're working with the Apple pencil, go ahead and tilt your pencil. So instead of drawing, you know, precisely like this, tilt it so it's almost horizontal, flat on the screen. If you don't have the Apple Pencil, you're probably going to have to increase the size of your brush quite a lot. And here we're going to brush just on the certain sections of the tiger to give it a little bit more volume. So I'm going to brush on top of the head like this. And as you can see, it's very, very quick, but it does already add a lot to the piece. It builds the texture and it also adds this effect of light. So I'm going to brush my yellow on top of the head, maybe on top of the hand right here on top of this end, top of the tail, so everything that is facing upwards essentially and maybe a little bit as well on the body because otherwise the body is going to be very very flat so just a little bit like this. So you can see it literally takes like what 30 seconds not even but already our character is coming to life very very nicely. We're also going to create different color sections, so like the white for the belly and the bottom of the face and then the stripes. But for those different color sections, I personally like to create separate layers so that we can tweak it as we need. So I'm personally going to create a new layer, rename it to cream. And so that it stays within the base color shape, we are going to apply this cream layer by tapping on it. We're going to apply it as a clipping mask. So essentially going to do the same thing as Alpha Lock. Whatever we draw on this cream layer is going to stay within the color shape, but it is on a separate layer, which means it kind of gives you insurance. You know, whatever we draw on this cream layer, yes, it's going to stay within the base color, but it's going to be easier to change. So either erase or use hue, saturation and brightness to change your color. So that's just helpful when you're not necessarily using a preset color palette when you're building your palette as you go it's really helpful to separate everything on different layers so you can tweak them later and then merge them when you're more satisfied with your different colors that being said here all you're going to do is pick a nice bright cream color so it's essentially you go back to your orange that you use for the base of the tiger and then make it super super light. Not quite white because we want to be able to add highlights but you know very very light. And with the same brush that you use, so a textured brush like the 6B pencil or the basic texture brush, you're simply going to go over and draw any part of your tiger that you want to be white. So in my case here I want to have a white belly so I'm just going to go over and you know draw a little oval here and I like to not use color fill here because I do want to have texture within the different sections so I like to just manually fill them in and I also like to not have super sharp edges I like to have a little bit of random strokes kind of poking out I just I like this vibe but you could go ahead and you know not do that if, if you don't like it that's you know that's your choice as usual so the belly, maybe a little bit of a circle in the palm of the hand, like this, and definitely, definitely the bottom part of the face. So for the bottom part of the face, you want to cover, I guess from the, you know, the connection of the middle line here, you create a little swoop, then you come back up for the nose and create another little swoop. So this is the section we're going to go with right down to the bottom of the face like this and then once you kind of roughly mapped out the edges you can just go in with uh, your pencil tilted or a big brush to then fill that section in. Awesome! So super simple, but it's already starting to look so much more interesting. There's a lot going on, although we barely did anything, so that's great. 
we're going to repeat the step for the straps <laughs> so just creating a new layer renaming it to straps and applying it as a clipping mask so that it stays within our base color shape as well and for the stripes, we're going to go, it's really hard to see because it's essentially the same color as the uh, unused swatch, but we're going to go with a really nice dark brown. Now you could go with black if you wanted to, but I find that by using black, then you cannot add more shadows. So it's the same reason we're using cream here instead of white. Um, we just want to give it a little bit more leeway when we're drawing the base color shapes so that we can add highlights and shadows and details later. So just a nice dark brown. And then you can draw your straps wherever you want. I like starting with the tail because it's super easy, super quick, and it makes everything look super good. Um, just a tip here for the tail. Since we're drawing something uh, that is curved, you know, the, the, the tail is a cylinder, it's not just flat. Make sure that your stripes are curved as well. So that's going to make it look like, you know, your, your curve, your curve, your tail is curved and not just a flat cut out piece of paper. And I like to try to make the end of the tail black just so that it's really clearly defined and then you can add stripes however you want on your tiger I like to keep them very simple and don't have a whole lot of them so just kind of two here on the forehead and I like to make them look really kind of like sketch lines and then maybe a few on the side of the face kind of three once more, making them curve so that they follow the shape of the head. Maybe three on the side as well. I think the face, it's a good thing to keep the, the stripes fairly symmetrical. You know, if you have three on the side, keeping it three on the other side. But then on the body, you can go ahead and have fun. If you look at my example, I have two on the leg here, then kind of four and just Having, been, having a bit more fun, but on the head, usually, you know, the faces are symmetrical and characters and people. So I would recommend trying to keep it fairly symmetrical on the head. Although you could definitely experiment and have different numbers of stripes here as well. That's, you know, totally okay. And with that, it is time for the secret password. So if you've watched this part in the video, please let me know how many stripes you have on your tiger's tail. Now, if you're new on the channel, it might be like, what's What's that? What is that secret password thing? Well, it's a game that we play on the channel. I just hide a secret password in every video. And not only, you know, it's kind of fun. I know a lot of people really enjoy trying to find the password. When I do forget about it, I definitely hear about it in the comments. But it's also very important because it gives me some insight into how to edit and pace my videos better, which helps me to create better tutorials for you guys. So that's, you know, super, 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 super valuable. And it's also really cool because you guys know me, you've seen my face in the intro, you hear my voice throughout the entire video, but I have no idea who you guys are. And whenever you leave a comment, I get to see sometimes your name, sometimes your face, and it's just really great to see who's part of the creative community that we're building here on this channel. So for the firecracker stick, we're going to activate alpha lock like we did on the base color layer here. You could draw the colors on separate layer, but I don't know, I find that since it's not the main element, I personally don't really care about it nearly as much as the tiger. I want a tiger to be exactly right, but the decorations really don't need to be that perfect. So in terms of the color here, since we have you know already a very bright tiger we can go off of the tiger color to add the little stripes on the firecracker so essentially what i did here is i went with the brightest yellow and then desaturated it which created these kind of golden colors so you can pick in the color palette if you're using it the top golden color here for the little stripes on your firecracker if you're using your own colors you would just go back color pick on the tiger and then that desaturated color a little bit and that would work super well so you know since we're not creating colors from thin air anymore since we're not you know picking a cream or picking a brown that's also a reason that you don't necessarily need to create a separate layer and apply that layer as a clipping mask you can use straight up alpha lock because chances are you're not going to have to tweak that color later because you're already using a similar version of that color somewhere else in your illustration so you already know that it is what you want it to be so you can just draw thick stripes at the bottom like this of your firecrackers nothing super complicated 
and then picking the same cream color you use for the tiger to draw the string. So just kind of going between the firecrackers. Awesome. And then picking a nice darker brown for the stick. You could go with a gray as well. I like to just go with a dark brown. And you can see it's pretty much in the same kind of orange as the tiger. Honestly, you could go the same kind of orange as the tiger and then just make it super dark. And if your stick, like me, is just floating in the middle of nowhere, at this stage you want to use your eraser to go ahead and make it so that one of the fingers is on top of the stick. So, you know, something super simple like this already looks like the tiger is holding it a little bit more. Awesome! So we're going to move on to drawing the details now. So we're just going to create a new layer and we're going to create this new layer above everything. Below the sketch actually, so not above everything but above the firecrackers and the tiger. And we're going to rename this new layer to details. Now when I say details, it means a lot. It means the facial features, it means any outline that you want to use. In this illustration, I'm not going to go with straight up outlines like I sometimes do. I'm mostly going to just focus on the parts that are overlapping. But you could go ahead with straight up outlines if you wanted to. And we're going to stick with very similar brushes that we use for the sketch. So if you're using free brushes, you're going to use in the sketching panel still the 6B pencil. Otherwise, if you're using the illustration brushes, go back to the outlines brush. And you have a few options in terms of the color that you use here. You could go back to the color you use for the stripes, so this super nice dark brown. You could go with a burnt orange. You can really experiment here and have a lot of fun. I'm gonna go with the super dark um, stripe color so that the facial features and the details look really good. So you could simply go over and draw you know, the facial features that we already sketched. So it shouldn't be too complicated, but it's going to make your tiger look a bit more interesting than, you know, a no-faced tiger. I personally like to just leave a gap for the tongue and then really quickly going to pick a nice pink. So you could go back to the background color you use and make it more pink. Or just use the color in the color palette which is like this it's kind of you know not that bright still because it's on a, on the cream color you want it to be contrasted so something like this I think it looks really nice you could also use the cream color to add a bit of a highlight on the nose so you know something super quick like this and there we go we have a tiger face now the beauty on drawing on a separate layer as opposed to just drawing, you know, for example, in the color layer or something like this, is you can easily, by having this details layer selected, go in the selection tool, still set to freehand, just move a little part. Like for example, this eye, I feel it's too close to the nose, so you can just select it, use the arrow tool, and quickly move it. So you can just move your facial features around until you like them, and then we're going to keep refining and adding other details as needed. So still in this detail layer, I'm going to go back with um, this time a slightly lighter brown. Again, you can barely tell from the video, I can, I'm can i pretty sure, but just a little bit lighter than the rest of the facial features. And adding any other details or outline as you want. So I'm going to go with this, draw this little line between the nose and the mouth. And then separating any body part that is overlapping and is not separated yet. So for example here, the arm, the head, and all of that. So here I'm going to stop talking to let you focus because there's really no right or wrong way to draw your details. So it's a question of a personal preference. But I'm going to keep my video in the background. You can use it as a reference if you want. But you know, you could also just totally do your own thing. And then we're going to meet in the next step where we're going to start shading the piece and really make it look good. And just one quick note, don't forget to add the details on the firecrackers as well, which is going to really help um, separate them because right now they're kind of a big, big uniform blob. So just going back and separating them as needed. Awesome. 
Awesome! So at this point, we're ready to start shading and you can go ahead and hide your sketch layer. We don't need it anymore and it's going to help you just see what you're working on a little bit better. So for the shadows, you go ahead and just create a new layer above the stripes layer so that we can apply it as a clipping mask on the base color as well. We are going to rename this layer to shadows. Ooh. Shadows, there we go. And we're going to use the blending mode Linear Burn. Now, Linear Burn is a great blending mode to use for shadows because any color you use for your shadow is going to kind of blend with the color underneath and make the color underneath look dark. I know that probably doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but I'm going to show you an example. So in terms of shadows, I personally like to go with grayish purples or grayish pinks. The only thing you want to avoid is a very neutral gray because then your shadows are going to look muddy. But if I use, for example, this color, and I'm going to show you really quickly, that's kind of a terrible example. Um, <laughs> but it creates shadows, yes, but they adapt to the color that is underneath. So it's going to be a different color shadow depending on the belly or the orange or the stripes. So it's it's going to adapt, which means you only have to use one color for your shadows instead of having to pick a color, and, like pick the color you use for the belly, make it darker, create a shadow there, then create a darker orange, create your shadow there, and you know, you can just quickly draw your shadows with one color on top of everything. That being said, we're going to lower the opacity of the shadow layer around 50% for now. We can always tweak it, but yeah, that way it just looks a little bit, a little bit less intense than before. So for your shadows, you can use the same brush that you use for placing your secondary colors. So if you're using free brushes, you're going to stick with the 6B pencil. Honestly, you're going to do most of this video with the 6B pencil. But if you do have the illustration bundle, go ahead and pick the basic texture brush. And we're going to keep it very simple for the shadows here. We're mostly going to go wherever there's an overlap between body parts and separate the different body parts that way. So this arm here, I'm going to draw you know, a shadow between it and the body. And I'm going to just kind of blend it in. I kind of bled on the, the head here, but it doesn't matter. It's all good. And then the head is overlapping the body. So we're just going to draw out a bit of a shadow there as well. And if you went over the head, you can use your eraser, setting it to whatever eraser is all good. You just want to be able to clean your line up a little bit. So something like this already, we can see that, you know, the body parts are separated, which is great. You can also add some shadows on the legs where it connects with the body, something super subtle like this. Maybe something where the feet connect with the ground, well, connect, touch the ground very gentle, maybe a little bit on the back of the leg as well, maybe some below, like on the bottom of the tail to give it a bit more volume, maybe some below the arm, maybe some on the side of the head right here, again just to give it more volume. There's not an overlap, but this is much more of a form shadow, so something just super soft and using it to fill in the holes, well, the holes, uh, this part of the ears. Maybe creating a soft shadow here where, where we have an overlap, kind of a soft gradient like that. So you can see it's quite simple. Oh, maybe between the, the fingers as well, sorry. <laughs> So as you can see, it's really quite simple. We're not going with super realistic, fancy shadows in this video. We're going to do more of a painterly, simple vibe. But you can see already, just doing that does give a lot of depth. Well, a lot of depth. It does make our character look less flat. But we're going to add highlights, which is going to help as well. But before we add highlights, we might want to go back and play with the opacity of the shadow layer until you like the blending of it. And we're also going to add shadows with the same technique on the firecrackers. So just creating a new layer, renaming it this layer. Oops, renaming this layer to shadows, applying it as a clipping mask, using the blending mode linear burn, and lowering the opacity to roughly what you lowered did for your other shadows. So in my case, I think it was around 30%, but it really doesn't need to be exact at all. And then drawing shadows, whatever you have an overlap between firecrackers. Or if you just want to add some kind of form shadows so your firecrackers are not flat, they're curving away, which means you might want to add shadows 
on one of the sides. But again here, this is really not a tutorial where we're going to focus on drawing realistic shadows, we just want to add a bit more texture and also a bit more volume to our piece. So just taking a few seconds can already make a big difference as you can see. And one more thing we're going to do before hiding the highlights is adding a ground shadow. So just creating a layer below your color base, renaming this one to ground shadow. And still using the blending mode linear burn, lowering it, you know, around 50% to start. And just sketching a shadow below your tiger so it doesn't look like it's floating anymore. You can see you're, you're not necessarily drawing the ground, but just by drawing a shadow, it kind of grounds your character. And then going back and playing with the opacity as needed. You know, we can always go back when we use blending modes to tweak the opacity as we go and play with those blending modes until we really get the effect that we want. That's the beauty of them. They blend with the colors underneath and create totally... And you can always just go back and play with the opacity until you get something that you like. Okay, now time for the highlights, which is by far my favorite part. It's super easy, but it really is going to make the piece pop. So just creating a new layer above the tiger layers, so above the shadows. Renaming this one to lights, not locked, lights. And applying it as a clipping mask as well, so it stays within the color. And here we're going to use the blending mode add. Now add is kind of the, I don't want to say the opposite of linear burn, it's not true, but instead of making your colors darker, they're going, it's going to make them lighter, but it's also very, very strong. So you're going to go ahead and lower the opacity quite a lot, maybe around 30 or something like that for now, but we're going to go back and play with it later. And in terms of color here, you're going to go and pick a nice bright yellow to make your piece look like it's full of warm lights. You could go with, I don't know, a really bright blue if you wanted your piece to look colder, but here we're going with clearly a very warm ambience. So I'm going to go with a nice bright yellow. And here with the same brush, all we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and outline some of the outline with light. Um, <laughs> so essentially what I mean here is we're going to pick one side of our character. In my case, I have most of my shadows, as you can see here, on the left side, like the left side of the leg, the left side of the, the head and everything. So the opposite side of that is where the light source is going to be, obviously. So you can just go over and outline that with a very thin highlight. And yeah, this is, this is essentially what you're going to do for your, your highlights. So it's really simple. It's definitely not realistic but it makes the piece pop. I really like it. You know, you could go with a different vibe if you wanted to for your highlights. That's totally okay, but this is what I'm going to go with. It's super quick, as you can see, but already our character pops so much more from the background, so that's what we'll do. Now, once more here, I'm going to stop talking to let you focus on your highlights. You can really just place them wherever you want, or you can just watch my video. I'm going to keep it rolling in the background so you can use it as a reference. And don't forget to draw your highlights on the firecrackers as well. So just creating a new layer above the firecracker shadows, renaming it to lights. <laughs> I keep typing locks. I don't know why every single video I always do that. Um, applying it as a clipping mask using the blending mode add with lower opacity. And then just, oops, not with the eraser. And then just going over and highlighting one side of your firecrackers, which should really help them separate and not just be a big blob anymore. Awesome! So I just wanted to show you one more little thing before we move on to the background. If you're not super happy with the shape of your tiger, for example, I don't like the shape of my head here, not my favorite, you could always go ahead and deactivate alpha lock on any layer that has alpha lock, so the color layer probably. And then just select all of your layers, except the ground shadow actually, selecting all of your layers by swiping them towards the right. And then grouping those layers and renaming this group to Tiger. You're going to, from there, be able to go in the adjustment panel here at the top and select Liquify. Now the cool thing with Liquify is that if you set it to push, you can go ahead and reshape your tiger, which right now it looks bad, but if you're a bit more careful and precise, you can really go ahead and quickly just tweak some shapes that are not exactly how you want them to be. 
So you always have the option to experiment here with the liquify tool to change your shapes a little bit until you like it more or realize that nah, you preferred it the way it was before, in which case you could just undo your liquify. At this stage, all we have to do is add some elements on the background to make it look much more fun than it does right now. And we're going to start by adding this vignette effect, which is going to help the tiger pop even more. So we're simply going to create a new layer below the tiger group, but above the ground shadow. And we're going to rename this one to vignette. Now, all you're going to do for your vignette is pick a darker version of your red. So the red that you use for the background, making it darker. And with the same brush, because the brush really doesn't matter here, you're going to go ahead and draw a very rough circle that touches the top and the bottom. And then you can just fill in the sides so that you have a solid circle like this. If you have any outline or any stray lines, it doesn't matter because we're going to use the smudge tool to smudge it in. So your smudge tool, you're going to set it to the stucco brush in the painting panel because it does have really nice texture. And you're simply gonna go over and, you know, brush your circle in so it creates much more of a smooth vignette. It doesn't need to be perfectly smooth though because we do want to use that vignette to add a little bit of texture in the background because we do have some really nice texture in the tiger. We want the background to match. So just smoother than this, obviously, but it doesn't need to be a perfect gradient either. So it's a super simple step, but you can see already it looks so much more fun, um, so much more interesting, the background. So that's just a very easy tip, you know, if you're drawing a background that is a simple color, try adding some sort of a gradient within it. It doesn't necessarily have to be a vignette, it could be, you know, a gradient from the bottom to the top or from one side to the other. That just adds a little bit of interest to the piece as opposed to having a flat background. We're also going to draw some confetti, super easy, so just creating a new layer. This one we're going to put it below the vignette so that the confetti slightly changed colors as well. So just a new layer, giving it to confetti and then picking colors that you have somewhere else in your illustration. So in my case, I'm gonna go with the same colors I use for the firecrackers because they're kind of decorations. They should be roughly the same colors. So a nice bright red. And going back, if you're using the illustration bundle to the outline brush, otherwise sticking with the 6B pencil, you can just draw some confetti. So you can have circles, you can have stars. And I like to have kind of um, curved rectangles, I guess very quickly draw them. I like to have them very in size, very in thickness, orientation, and I like to have them in groups of kind of three per area, if that, if that makes any sense. So instead of having something that looks really regular in the sense that, you know, the confettis are perfectly uniformly dispersed on the piece, having clusters of confettis, I guess, is what I like to do. And I like to first draw them with just one color, just kind of figuring out the composition of the confetti, where, where they're going to be, and then using color drop to recolor some of them very quickly. So right now, just focusing on where the confettis are going to be instead of focusing on the colors, and then later figuring out the color part. So you really don't have to draw too many here, you kind of want to keep it fairly simple because we're going to have other decorations. So super quick. And then I'm going to go back with the color you, I used for the firecrackers, uh, the, the little yellow stripe, but I'm just going to make it a little bit lighter so it pops a bit more. So again, same color as the stripes, just lighter. And then you can just color drop some confettis. And that's pretty much it for the confetti. Really simple, really quick, but you know, already the background looks so much more fun. We're also going to draw some paper lanterns. So just creating a new layer above or below the confetti. It doesn't really matter. It depends on if you want the lanterns to be, you know, in front or behind the confetti. I want mine to be in front, so I'm just going to create it above the confetti layer. Renaming it to lanterns. 
So just like for the confettis, I want to use the same color, the same color palette I use for the firecrackers so that all the decorations are in the same color palette. That way they don't distract away from the tiger. You know they're still there, they still make the piece more interesting, but the tiger is clearly the focal point here. So the lanterns, you're simply going to draw circles. I would recommend drawing an odd number of lanterns. So three, five, seven, you know, you, you get the point. In terms of composition, that, that's usually better. So very simple circles. They don't need to be perfect circles in any way. And then you can go in with a slightly darker version of the red you use to add some details on the lantern. So it could be slightly curved horizontal lines like this. Could be slightly curved vertical lines just to make them a bit more interesting and then we're going to go back to our little gold color so the same we use on the firecrackers to add a bit of a kind of topping and then some tassels I guess on the bottom you can see it's really quick you really don't need to agonize over making those shapes look good we're just roughly sketching the background to make the piece feel more alive but without taking away from the tiger so the tiger is really what you're going to spend the time on this is where you're going to put the details and everything in the background is going to be there but not you know not precise no outlines no details just shapes in the background to make it feel more interesting without taking away again what's more from the tiger. Now these lanterns I realized they probably would look better above the vignette. Yeah there we go. So you might want to change your layer put it above the vignette. And then the last thing we have to do if you want is just drawing some corners. It's super quick but it does make the piece feel a bit more like a Chinese New Year's card. So you could go ahead and create a new layer above the lanterns. This one, make sure it is above the vignette though. And rename this one to Corners. Oops, corners, there we go. And all you have to do is draw kind of two circles, roughly the same size. And then fill it in like such. Then going in with a darker version of your color. So at this stage, it's also going to be a brown. You can just draw a little spiral like this. And you can go back with a lighter version of your gold and add a bit more contrast. So just following the, the lines you use for your spirals to add contrast or highlights, no matter how you want to see it. So it's going to look a little bit like this. It's really super quick, but it does make the corners pop, which is just super, super cool. And you could draw them, you know, just repeat the same steps on all the corners, or you could go ahead and duplicate your, your layer, so just swiping it towards the left with one finger, clicking duplicate, which is going to create an exact copy. You can then go in the arrow tool at the top, clicking flip vertical, which is going to flip your corner. And then you can activate snapping, magnetic, which is going to allow you to move your corner, but it's going to snap on the edge, so it's going to be very quick and easy to just put it on the top right here. Zooming in to make sure there's no gap. There you go. So we have two corners. We can then go ahead and merge those corners layer to squishing them with two fingers and then duplicated that new merge layer. Flipping in this time horizontally, which is going to allow you to just quickly move your corners over to the other side and finish up your piece just like that. Now, if you enjoyed this video and want to learn how to create more cute illustrations, I highly recommend you check out this playlist in which I'm going to teach you exactly that. But before you leave, make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the weekly videos I post every Tuesday and Saturday. Then click on the link right here and I'll meet you there.